Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of uh, Retro Reviews. Today I will be reviewing and uh, talking about uh, Superman number 650. So this is the first post-Infinite Crisis Superman issue, uh, which is an, the first part of an eight-part story line that crosses over with Action Comics, uh, you know, as the uh, one year later uh, story. Uh, this, this, this is also uh, the renamed uh, Adventures of Superman. So at the end of uh, Infinite Crisis, or around that, the yeah, around uh, during Infinite Crisis, the last Superman issue was, I believe, issue two hundred twenty-seven. That's the nineteen eighty-seven series. After Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, the original Superman was renamed Adventures of Superman. So after Infinite Crisis, DC decided to. Uh, sort of streamlined their Superman line, uh, so they canceled the uh, the um, eighty seven Superman, and just uh, renamed the um, uh, Adventure Superman gave gave it back its old name from the nineteen thirty nine series. Uh, so before we get to talking to about this particular issue, uh, I want to thank everyone who participated uh, left an answer to a question I tweeted uh, last Sunday which I was asking people you know because these retro reviews I've been talking about the books that got me into up comics I decided to throw out the question uh, about no not one I wanting to know uh, people have, that have watched the uh, videos, which books uh, got them into comics? Uh, so I got uh, a few answers here from uh, Da Costa, Sleepy Reader, and uh, Devin, who all kindly answered the question, uh, giving me their um, the, the list of books that got them into them. Um, you know, the, the gateway books to certain series as well, you know, um, with the Costa telling me that, that the family was the, his way, gateway to Batman. And Sleepy Reader said that Chris Col Sc Scroll War was what got, got him into uh, the uh, into Marvel. Uh, so I'll, the, the question is still up there. Uh, I can't retweet it right now. Uh, because I retweeted it once, uh, so uh, uh, if uh, so, if you want to answer the question as well, you can uh, leave it in the comments. You know what books got you into comics. Uh, if somebody uh, can retweet it, retweet the uh, original tweet. Um, please do so if you can do that as well, because I actually retweeted. It once so I can retweet my own tweet more than once so um, at least I don't know if I can like but you know thanks for the uh, participation um, uh, and please uh, leave it down in the comments if you want to participate as well and I'll mention um, more people who uh, answered the question so Superman 650 so, uh, so this is the one year later storyline. So at the end of Infinite Crisis, it was decided that uh, all the comics would go, would jump one year ahead from the end of Infinite Crisis with the missing year being covered in the weekly 52 maxi series or series, the weekly series. So, uh, for the past year, there has been no Superman because at the end of Infinite Crisis, Superman had lost uh, all his powers. He basically depleted all of his energy after you know the big battle with uh, the uh, Superboy Prime from from Earth Prime. So he depleted all his energy, so that so he doesn't have any of his powers. So 
for that whole year uh, a bunch of other heroes have uh, taken over taking care of protecting metropolis from from the uh, um, from all the criminals so this issue actually opens up uh, with a sort of well basically it really opens up uh, with something landing 68 years prior but nobody from and then we get this really nice uh, double page spread by uh, artist Bill Woods because it's a retrospective on Superman. He's been gone for a year, and so it was decided to Metropolis with some sort of retrospective film right down in, in at the park. Uh, so, um, so basically, we get uh, you know Clark doing Clark and Lewis doing their reporter thing. Uh, we are introduced with a little subplot with involving Luthor, who has been acquitted of all his crimes. Uh, so that thing that really happened prior to even the crisis when uh, during the, I guess, the Superman Batman storyline, the, the first story arc from that book, where you know Luthor falls, both as president of the United States and all of his friends had been exposed. So he finally gets acquitted uh by now his reputation is tarnished uh and he has something obviously involving this uh crystal this kryptonian crystal uh this sunstone this is where we get the uh, name sunstone for the, the kryptonian crystals that uh or were originally used in the uh original superman movie the donner movie you know that the crystal which really didn't have any name and this sort of like I think the first appearance in comics with a given name as a sunstone uh, then we're also introduced with the main plot uh, with uh, the introduction of a new kryptonite man uh, by the name of a uh, scientist by the name of K. Russell Abernathy which is um, uh, the image of him well, this guy who who ended up becoming the uh, the new kryptonite man because he had been experimenting with kryptonite, trying to you know create uh, a new source of energy. But as it turns out, it seems some of the research had been stolen. Plus, he'd been testing on um, animals uh, as well. We're also introduced to uh, the sort of um, downtown area or the part of, the, of a metropolis called the avenue of tomorrow where a lot of tech startups uh, and companies uh, have been popping up so this is like the first mention of that as well uh so basically you know uh, there's an accident and abernathy gets you know struck by a uh, kryptonite along with a, a, a monkey right here uh, and uh, he becomes the new uh, kryptonite man. So he's wrecking havoc in, in, in Metropolis because, first of all, you know, uh, he had no control over his powers. Then he um, got used to them. Uh, Clark called Supergirl in, uh, which is one of the best uh, depictions of the character at, and at this point in 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 history because or in, or in the yeah in history or well, not in history but at this point in super in since the return of supergirl of of Cara's to the to the books because uh over in her book she wasn't being written too too heroic uh and here she just you know is doing a, a great job uh, helping out stopping the kryptonite man very smartly as well uh, while in her book she's just you know a reluctant hero who has a lot of issues which is what you know DC had been pushing for since her return trying to make her sort of like an edgy teenage teenager and uh, necessarily very noble and you know that being a, 
a problem for her since you know she returned in 2005 um, so she's able to defeat the um, the, the kryptonite man as well and uh, when with you know Luthor showing up at the scene you know after you know everything got calmed and pretty much uh Hilton's Clark you know uh you know just you know Hilton's Clark in a very uh, uh gangsterish way uh, of course super of course Clark gets you know still a hurt because he still doesn't have his his powers back which will slowly be returning as uh, the story moves forward so one of the things I really liked about uh, this book is first you know we it, it's co-written by um, Kurt Busiak and Jeff Johns who uh, would become uh, the writers for for the Superman line uh, right after this arc ends the although Jeff Jones run started a little bit later than Kurt Busiak's in fact after this story this arc ends Kurt Busiak takes over action comics and writes uh, I believe a four part story is it four or five uh, a short story arc uh, dealing with uh, the return of Superman while you know uh, Jeff Johns run gets gets going which didn't really go so well because that run pretty much ran very late uh, as well so uh, it wasn't until Gary Frank came over that uh, it kind of got regular but Jeff Jones didn't really last a long time as the writer of Action Comics. Uh, he left right after, I guess, his fourth, fourth or fifth arc, which was the uh, Brainiac story. Then you know that would have given us the uh, whole New Krypton stuff. I think he left after New Krypton. I can't remember. Anyways, uh. What I really did like is the feel to it, uh, which is what you really get a lot from Kurt Busiak's run going forward, which is a very Bronze Age feel to, to the storytelling. Uh, he actually brings back a lot of characters from the Bronze Age. Uh, he actually also reinvents the, uh, the prankster uh, to make him making him more interesting but I mean th this story I could uh, imagine it being drawn by Kurt Swan especially the origin of, of, of the villain you know very much you know a villain created by uh, by accident uh, you know using kryptonite that's very typical of, of the Bronze Age uh, also very grounded story I guess in, in the sense that it's not a big cosmic threat which usually is what uh, most Superman stories uh, kind of tend to go to because you know why stop uh, some random you know thief when you know Superman should be bigger and and, and bolder uh, so dealing with you know, super villains wasn't, you know, something that most writers would go to at this point in time. Uh, but we get a lot of um, of these uh, villains showing up. You know, much more uh, classic feel to Superman. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Also, um, sorry. Also, uh, the, another thing I liked about this art is that uh, each issue does tell a a a, a story. Uh, within each part, you 
you get a, a larger story involving uh, Luthor, uh, which does come to a conclusion. Uh, but each issue by itself, you do get, you know, one uh, one story with a beginning, a middle, and an end. Uh, and particularly, you get a lot of guest stars because at this point, uh, um, there's no Superman, so a Clark calls certain heroes to help him. Uh, you know, take care of, of, of certain villains uh, that show up. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, I really like uh, the whole... Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I really like this whole uh, post-Infinite Crisis run prior to... Uh, to the new Krypton stuff, and I mean, I like the new Krypton stuff as well, but um, that was more of a bigger, larger storyline that covered all of the all of the Superman books and read Superman books like Supergirl and even had to release a third Superman book, which was uh, uh, New Krypton. But so this pre pre um pre new krypton stuff which uh was a much more focused story uh much more focused stories not nothing really too big uh there were some tying issues to some of the other uh going on that would take us to like final crisis uh but of overall um uh, it was a great run, especially the Kurt Busiek run, which I really liked because it was, uh, it went to a very Bronze Age feel to it, very uh, classic stuff, if you will, uh, but was highly criticized by a ton of people. Uh, it got really nasty back in the day, you know, with the whole with the whole Kurt Busiek run. Um, some people would complain that the storytelling was too compressed. Uh, some people that was too decompressed, especially with um, Jeff Chan's run though. But with Kurt Busiek, it was like uh, a few issues that, you know, got people riled up and I'm like, you know, that's when I realized that fandom was kind of weird. That really some people like one thing, other people like other things, and uh, yeah, Kerbiziak had a, you know, it got pretty bad, you know, the criticisms, because uh, these were really very compressed storytelling uh, arcs would probably last uh, one issue, two issue, three issues at the most, or maybe four. Plus, he also he actually started his run with a much bigger um, arc with artist Carlos Pacheco, uh, which again kind of ran late from time to time. So you got to get a, a different type of story with a different artist to cover, you know, that time for uh, the next part of the bigger storyline to move on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, I highly recommend, you know, the one year run and I'll probably review the rest of the issues one of these days, uh, as well as some of my favorite uh, uh, Kurt Busiak issues uh, from his time as the writer of Superman. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I'll leave my Twitter link uh, below, in, in the description below. Uh, like, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And so I sign out as I always do. Until next time, keep smiling.